like me and you gonna have a little guys so today I'm going to be doing a book review and the book that I'm going to be reviewing is The Dwarves which is book one in the four book series by Marcus Heights and I really enjoyed this book so let's get into the review. This book ended up being so much better than I thought it would be because I've never really heard anyone talk about this. I don't know if you guys have but I personally have never heard anyone tell me anything good about this series or bad or anything. I've just never heard of it before and I found it in the charity shop and I picked it up on a whim, took it home and I just decided to read it this month and I ended up giving it a four star rating so well four and a half probably is more accurate because it was that good and I just really enjoyed it so if you've never heard of this or if you've seen it and didn't know what it was then definitely I would say it's worth picking up. So the beginning of this story is a little bit slow and there are elements which are a little bit confusing such as all the names being very similar however I found that once you got past that the story was actually really really good and it's very, very reminiscent of Tolkien's Middle Earth and classic fantasy stories. It's set in a world where there are so many different types of race and different divisions within those races. So you have the dwarves, the elves, the men and the wizards, and they are essentially the good guys. They are quite classic good guys in fantasy. And then we have the evil ones who are the elf, which is like the evil version of an elf, and the orcs and the evil wizards and just everything like that and the perished land. The perished land is essentially a curse that's taking over some of the world and anyone who dies in the perished land will rise again as undead and that's pretty evil as well so they're the evil guys. And in this book all of the different sides are tested against one another and it results in a massive massive war to save their world which is known as Girdlegard. Girdlegard is very similar to Middle-earth and this definitely retained elements of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings the whole way through it, but I really enjoyed it because of the new twists that the author brought to the story. The dwarves themselves are divided into five different sections and they are the firstlings, the secondlings, the thirdlings who are considered to be quite evil because they have turned against their fellow dwarves, the fourthlings and the fifthlings who died out a long time ago and um, the prologue of this book explains why they died out. There is a succession war which is happening throughout this book and it's all to do with how every faction or every division of the dwarves has their own ruler, their own king, but there is always one high king who rules over the entirety of the dwarves all of the different divisions and the high king that they have at the time of this story is quite elderly he's dying and it falls to them to nominate a new candidate for when he dies but there is quite a lot of dissent about this candidate because the candidate is being influenced by other evil forces and it kind of leads them into disarray so that is one of the storylines that is kind of ongoing is the succession war and the dwarves are fighting within their own factions to kind of elect who they want. So into all of this succession mess walks our main character who is called Tungdil. Tungdil is a dwarf but he was raised in the land of men by a wizard called Lot Ironen. And Lot Ironen is a very famous wizard, he's very good, he uses his powers for good and he's a very kind-hearted soul. So he has raised Tungdil to be very skilled at diplomacy and a scholar and he's very different to how a lot of his race would act in certain situations and these qualities and skills that he gains by living in the world of the men lead him to be a much better person, a much better rounded character who we can follow throughout the story and be interested in. Early on in this story Lot Ironen sends Tung Dil on an adventure to kind of deliver some items to an old friend of his and he also hopes that Tungdil will along the way meet some of his own kind because Tungdil has never actually met any of his own kind, he's never met any dwarves, he's never come across them and he doesn't really know what it is to be a dwarf. His journey takes him across a whole host of different lands and through all sorts of different villages where he encounters different types of people and different species and along the way he becomes mixed up in something much much bigger than he could ever have anticipated when he first set out on his quest to deliver these items. He meets a whole host of different characters and the journey just becomes bigger and bigger and it's definitely one of those books that grows on you. At the start it's quite slow 
but if you persevere through it then it really does start to get interesting pretty quickly after that and things definitely build and new characters are being introduced all the time and it just gets really really exciting so I would definitely say that if you did ever start this and you wanted to carry on with it but you weren't sure because it wasn't that quick or interesting it does get a lot better and I would say if you do like Tolkien's worlds then you're probably going to like this too. Tungdil knows nothing about his lineage or his heritage he has read a lot about dwarves in books but that is the only way that he has ever got any knowledge about his race so he really doesn't understand what it is to be a dwarf and he really doesn't know sort of the qualities that are demanded of dwarves. As he is journeying along he becomes charged with something much bigger than just delivering the goods. He gets put into a situation where he has to lead a pack of warriors and people and dwarves and he has to bring them to victory and stop the evil spreading across the land and taking over everything so he's charged with a pretty important task and then from then on it gets pretty pretty exciting. So some of the main characters who I feel like it's definitely worth mentioning and there are quite a lot because it's a 700 page book and new characters get introduced all along so there are quite a lot of main major characters who made a big impression on me and for that I definitely admire Heights because it's interesting when you get a load of characters but you can't actually remember them after the story whereas in this book I definitely do remember them, they all had their own personalities and I found them all to be very endearing and lovable and exciting and the evil characters were just as evil and horrible as the others were lovable and kind so I definitely enjoyed that. So the first two characters who are worth mentioning are Boendal and Boindil. Both of these are dwarves, they are twin brothers and they're warriors. They fight alongside one another, they have a great tactic of working back to back with one another and they're very energetic, charismatic characters. They're really, really enjoyable to see as a pair because they contradict one another and argue with each other but in the end they do love one another and they care for each other and they keep each other's backs safe. And they're just really enjoyable characters, very endearing and very, very charming. As far as they are concerned, they were probably some of my favourite characters in the book and I really enjoyed their relationship that they had. Next we have Bavragor, and Bavragor is essentially a mason, but he's in his old age now. He's had a rather harsh life, some terrible things have happened to him, so he's turned to alcoholism. But in his prime he was actually the master mason who created nearly all of the secondlings city and all the stonework there and it's very very detailed and intricate and his skill level is astounding so he comes along on the adventure too and even though he's quite an old alcoholic grump a lot of the time he does still know how to have a laugh and he is an enjoyable character to read about. Next we have Balendolin and Balendolin is the advisor to the current high king. He is a secondling and he is a very very good advisor, he is trying to unite the dwarves, he wants them to unite with other races and he wants them to become a united force and just unite everyone together and everyone to have peace and prosperity. Next we have Goinga and Goinga is essentially a diamond cutter, he is one of the fourthlings and he is a very sort of shallow character. He has a very set mind about what he thinks is going on and he's very suspicious and scared of everyone and everything. He's quite a wimpy character but he's very fun and enjoyable to read about and he does grow a lot as the story develops. Next we have Gandoga who is the king of the fourthlings, he is the one who is competing to become the high king, he wants to become the high king, he's a very good ruler but he is a little bit susceptible to evil and he's easily influenced by horrible nasty people so he has to grow into his role as a king as well. Then we have Bill Sapar, who was one of the evil characters in my mind. He was a very nasty character. He was working against Balendolin and he wanted to ensure that they would go to war. He wanted the dwarves to go to war with the orcs or go to war with the elves, basically anyone. He just wanted to cause a massive war and he's quite a nasty and evil character and we don't really like him from the start. He's quite a nasty character. He is a dwarf but he's a very grim nasty one. Next we have the main evil character and that is Nod Owen. Nod Owen is essentially a really nasty evil wizard who has been corrupted by the perished lands and he is a nasty guy. He is very set on taking over the world and he thinks that he's doing it for a good cause but 
we can see the reality that he has been corrupted and he's been taken over and he doesn't really understand the horrific scale of his devastation that he's causing. Next we have Namora who is a young woman and she looks very strangely like an elf although she's not an elf, the dwarves are a little bit suspicious of her when they first encounter her. And along with Namora we have Fergus. Fergus is her lover and he's very very good with pulley systems and mechanisms, he's very good at problem solving as well and he's just a regular man. Then we have Rodario who is a very very eccentric and funny character, he was an actor and he's also a playwright, he follows them on their adventure wanting to write it all down and just remember it all but he's also quite a klutz and he's very silly at points but he does save their life a few times and he's just a lovable character definitely one of those lovable ones next we have andokai who is a mage and she is a little bit unsure about where her loyalties lie at the beginning of this novel so it takes her a little while to figure out what she wants to fight for but she is very very powerful she has a servant who works for her who is very very scary and ominous, no one really knows who he is or what he is and it's never really discovered but he's just always there as a kind of presence at her side. And finally there is Gizzlebert who is a character that a lot of the characters in this book didn't think they would ever come across and they would never see again so I'll leave that there as a cliffhanger and hopefully you're intrigued by all of these wonderful wonderful characters because they are so entertaining and all of them have their own personalities and there are so many more that I could have mentioned as well who have less major parts but those are the main ones who come into it and those are the ones who I personally will probably remember more of. So what I really really liked about this book was that it started a little bit slow and it didn't quite pique my interest at the beginning but as it grew it just developed in storyline, it developed in plot and the characters became more interwoven and everything just started flowing together in a much much more entertaining way than I could ever have anticipated never having heard of it before but I really enjoyed it and I would definitely recommend this series especially to any of you who love classic fantasy because I feel like this is a genuine classic fantasy nothing crazy happens but it is a very very well written story and if you want a well-written classic fantasy story much along the same lines as Tolkien then this is definitely the book for you and it was a very very enjoyable read. It was quite easy language, it wasn't anything superb and amazingly different to any other story but it was just the characters really sold it to me and I highly enjoyed them and I definitely think that you guys will too if you like fantasy so let me know down below if you have read about this or you have heard about this and you have read it before because as I say I've never known anyone who has but I would definitely be interested to hear your guys opinions about this because I really enjoyed it and I would highly recommend it. So if you do leave spoilers please put spoiler at the top of your comment as always. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you all very very soon in my next video. Bye! Me and you gonna have a little